should you do when it comes to phosphorus recommendations in low pH soil? That's our topic for today. Ah, first of all, you may have caught this. We're talking about low pH soils. That must mean there's some differences from low pH soil to high pH soil. There absolutely are. The things that can tie up phosphorus, for example, in your soil may vary greatly. The nutrients that are available, the microbial activity, and so much more. So, first of all, low pH soil. We're talking about acidic soil. Just measuring the phosphorus is going to be a little different than when we're in high pH situations. Okay, with acidic soil, the soil pH will be less than 7. When the soil pH is less than 7, what we like to see for a phosphorus test is the Bray test. Now, there are two different types of Bray tests, a weak Bray and a strong Bray. The weak Bray is also called the P1 test, and the strong Bray is also called the P2 test. So the P1 or weak Bray, it's going to tell you available phosphorus, phosphorus that's sitting in your soil ready to go today. What the P2 tells you, or the strong bray, that tells you what else is in the soil in addition to that that is maybe going to be available in the next year, the year after that, maybe the year after that. It's more of a measurement of total soil phosphorus. Now it's not complete total soil phosphorus, but it certainly is a lot more than what's available today. So Brian mentioned the soil tests that you look at. Let's, let's look at them a little closer. So look at the P1 phosphorus rating, or the weak bray rating you're going to see parts per million. For example, let's just say it's 10 parts per million of P1 phosphorus, but I'm looking for pounds per acre. So to convert that in a six inch soil sample, that represents two million pounds of soil. So you take your parts per million times two to equal pounds per acre. So 10 parts per million times two is 20 pounds per acre. Now that's pounds of actual phosphorus. What many fertilizer dealers and fertilizer companies will do is they'll talk about phosphate. How much phosphate does your crop need? So to convert phosphorus to phosphate, you multiply that number times 2.3. So we have 10 parts per million times two is 20 pounds of phosphorus times 2.3 is 46 pounds of phosphate per acre. All right, so as soon as Darren talks about that, you start going, whoa, this sounds kind of confusing. Yep, we understand it sounds a little bit confusing, but it's really not that bad. Just a couple of conversions, that's really what you need to know. Now, the next thing we want to take a look at is, we, we mentioned, all right, the Bray tests are important for low pH soil, but how about tie-up? How about how much of that is actually going to be available for your plant? What we get really concerned about is if your soil pH gets very low. Ideally, for phosphorus availability or phosphate availability, we want that soil pH in the 6.3 to 6.8 range. If it gets below that, you could have tie-up with aluminum. You could have tie-up with iron. Those get to be real concerns for us. The other thing you're going to want to watch is that pH is really low, is you may have tie-up even from the free mineralization that you get out in your soil. When I talk about mineralization, this is one other thing you'll have to keep in mind when you're trying to build your recommendation for, well, how much more phosphate do I need to apply to my soil? When we look at your organic matter percentage, for each 1% of organic matter you have in your soil, a normal soil is going to be releasing four to seven pounds of phosphate per acre per year. Now, if you've got that super low pH that's down in the fours, for example, it's going to be tougher for some of that stuff to become actually available for your crop due to tie up like Brian said. But let's say that your soil pH is kind of in line. Well then we'd look at if you're in an area with a very short growing season, uh, you don't get much moisture or much heat, you're probably going to be more towards the four pounds of phosphate per acre per percent of organic matter that you get. And if you've got a situation where you're in a very warm climate, lots of moisture, long growing season, you may get seven pounds or even more of phosphate to come available out of each percentage of organic matter. What this really comes back to is how much total phosphate do you actually need and how much can your plants bring up? In other words, where is that phosphate located in your soil? If it's just randomly all over the soil, there's no chance that your roots are going to be able to explore 100% of your soil. But what we would encourage you to do is go to the Ag PhD Fertilizer Removal app and then take a look at your crop and your yield goal. Then you can make some of your calculations after that. I will tell you on our own farm where we're going for very, very high yield levels on corn and on soybeans, I'd like to ideally have 100 parts per million of available phosphate per acre. I want to have at least that much at a bare minimum because 
if I look at how much our crops are going to remove, it's probably quite a bit more than that even. So then I have to put more phosphorus out or more phosphate out and just make this whole thing work in total. But the big thing is anymore a lot of people get very concerned about phosphorus and water quality. Just understand that phosphate in rare cases leaches. So in other words most of the time phosphate stays exactly where you put it in the soil as long as you're not way overdoing it or anything like that or have maybe super super low cation exchange capacity. But in our medium to heavy soils it's going to stay where it's put. So what I want to look at is I want to put that phosphorus a little bit deeper in the soil so it doesn't have any possibility of moving off my land then I'm pretty safe until that phosphorus gets used up eventually whether it's this year, next year or the year after that. The other thing with that too, Brian, is if we can band phosphorus, our plants can more efficiently pick it up. You band it close to the row. Maybe it's in a two by two placement, or maybe it's a deep placement like you're talking about with strip till down eight inches deep, something like that. Now our plant has a concentrated phosphorus band that it won't get tied up as easily in the soil and our root system can grow right through it. The other thing with phosphorus is the way that it likes to get into our plants is through diffusion. So it likes to be in an area of high concentration moving to an area of low concentration which would be into our root system. So there's a couple of things there with phosphorus that are really important. So once again when we start talking about phosphorus in low pH ground it's definitely different than in high pH ground. We want a different test run. In the low pH soil we want the Bray test run. That way you have a more accurate measure or at least a slightly more accurate measure of available phosphorus. Then start making your conversions to pounds per acre, convert phosphorus to phosphate and take a look at tie up and those types of things. But once again I guess I would just simply say hey we've got to look at total phosphorus in that soil. Your crop most likely needs quite a bit of phosphorus. If you don't have available phosphorus where it should be in ample supply you can't expect top yields. You also can't expect top yields if you have weed problems out in your field. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed later in the show.